In this episode of Sentimental, I'm going to reminisce about growing up in a small town in the 1980s. So, stick around. And welcome to Sentimental. My name is Rob, and in this episode, I'm going to sit and reminisce about growing up in a very small town in the 1980s. Now, this is the show where I just, I have things bumping around in my head, and I want to get them out. So it's a lot of memories and reminiscing, and I hope that you can relate to it out there. And if you don't, I hope you get a little bit of entertainment out of it. Just, you know, with how great things were way back when. So, I'm going to do something a little bit different this time around. So, here we go. Hello, everybody. I thought for this episode of Sentimental, I would do something a little bit different. Usually, I just sit in front of the camera and relive memories. And all you have to look at is my big, ugly mug. So, I thought I would paint a miniature while talking about, and this episode will be about uh, my hometown growing up in the 80s. And I thought this will give you something to look at if you want to. If not, it's still a good podcast-esque type of experience that you can just sit back, let it play in the background, and not be concerned with looking at it. Either way, let me uh, start off by saying I used to paint miniatures all the time. When I would get home from work, that would be my unwinding time. Um, now, that's been about 10 years since I've actually picked up a brush and a miniature. And these are some old miniatures that I had still laying around from 10 plus years ago. This one I thought I would do is a little bit bigger. It's a troll from Shadowrun, uh, the role-playing game. And I thought with its bigger size and a lot of variety of color, it would be a good jumping in point. I have already have my palette here uh, divvied out. I'm not sure if these are the colors that I'll stick with, but it's a good starting point. And I doubt that I'll be able to get this finished in one sitting. So if you guys like this, uh, let me know and we can keep doing this whenever we do a sentimental and, you know, you don't have to look at my ugly mug. Anyway, so let's jump in. And I want to start with red here. I think I'll just start with that with his cloak. But anyway... And by the way, let me point out, when I learned to do this, it was on my own with a little bit of tutelage, tutelage, whatever. <laughs> I'm very tired. This week has been very long, and I'm sure it's been long for everybody. Um, I've been working through this episode that we're going through, and um, I'm a essential personnel where I work. So I've been working through this. And working a little bit harder than I usually do. But anyway, we're here to not worry about that. We're here to relax and talk about better times back in the 80s. But anyway, what I was saying was, what little bit of learning I did was uh, a company called Games Workshop would put out pamphlets on how to paint. And I would read those. But... It's not like nowadays where there's many a different video. And and by the way, I have to point out that I'm kind of inspired to do this from Al over at Kaiju Shorts. Um, he does beautiful work on miniatures and Kaiju models and statues. And I mean, the guy's an absolute artist. So I was kind of... Every time I see his beautiful work, I'm like, wow, you know, I think I should do that again as a nice way to relax. I'm going to have to probably do a couple coats on this because of the primer coming through. But anyway, I grew up in a town 
called Westminster in Maryland. A pretty small town. I can't give you any numbers on how small it was. I mean, it's definitely grown over the years. But the one thing that I wanted to talk about mostly is, and I'm sure a lot of people my age can relate to this, as I hope you do with most of these episodes, where you might find them completely boring, is the whole bicycle way of life. I mean, we I would leave the house at in the morning and not come back until the evening. And my stomping grounds, as, as I'll call them, was the main street of my town. It had a lot to offer. And unfortunately, over the years, as with a lot of places with main streets, it isn't what it used to be. I mean... Ever since I was probably 10 years old, up until I was, I don't know, 16, 17, I rode my bike everywhere. One of the places, well, let me, even uh, the middle school I went to was really close to the main street, and I would ride my bike there, and then hang out on Main Street after I was done school. But the places that I love to frequent, the one place I've been reminiscing a lot about recently is a place called Bobby's Hobby Lobby. And it was a small business, a small hobby store. I mean, I shouldn't say it was, I mean, it was a small business, but a very big place. First off, the one crowning jewel it had, and a lot of hobby stores had this at the time, it had a very large train garden inside under a glass or plexiglass uh, huge cover. And you would push a button and the train would go by. It was like an old-fashioned metal uh, doorbell kind of button. And I would watch the train. I mean, it would have everything for different hobbies. I mean, even baking. But the one thing that it is part of my mythology for is it had role-playing game books. As you can see, I've already started this. And like I said, this was probably 10 years ago, if not more. But <clears throat> when you walked into the front door off of Main Street, there was a role-playing game section. Very small, few books on the shelves, a few miniatures, which back in the day, they weren't as intricate as this dude, that's for sure. Things of dice and Dragon Magazine. And I would look at it for hours, or at least seem like hours of flipping through the books and the magazines dragon and dungeon magazine and i don't mean dungeons and dragons magazine i mean they were two separate magazines dungeon and dragon dragon was always my favorite it had more to offer because it would have the marvel files in it which i loved They would uh, showcase characters or events in the Marvel Universe for their TSR role-playing game at the time. And they would have comics in the back. Uh, one of those was Snarf Quest that I did. I have a graphic novel of that I did for an episode of It Came From. And just for some reason, I've been really reminiscing about that place. Of course, in my mind, I think of a hundred things I want to say, but now that I'm talking about it, it's hard to put those things into words. I'm sure you all relate. We all have a nostalgic mind.
I mean, but I even remember things like all the fancy cake pans that were of characters or just uh, different things like trucks or animals or and in the back of the building because they also had a back door because there was parking behind because parking on Main Street was always a pain I mean I didn't drive at the time but I saw the difficulties my uh, mother would have but in the back of the place they had an old coke machine where it was actual you put your money in and you would open up a door and there would be glass bottles on their sides stacked up but I loved frequenting frequenting that place if you all haven't noticed by now I have a horrible way of talking part of that hillbilly dialect but across the street and I'll get back to the nitty-gritty of the other shops in the area but across the street from there was the public library and I would hang out there probably more than most kids looking through all the books all the monster books all the ghost books they had role-playing books which is really revolutionary at the time if you think about it because of the whole satanic panic thing and in a small town but that was where I first saw some of the more bigger and popular books since the hobby store seemed to have you know the one of the things they had that I wish I would have bought at the time was uh, GURPS had a book called Tune and I guess easiest way to equate it would be like a Roger Rabbit type of uh, scenario. You're living in a cartoon world with cartoon rules and physics. Like anvils and cream pies as weapons and things of that degree. And let me uh, say again, it's been over 10 years since I've actually done this. I mean, I've done little uh, craft things here and there with painting, but nothing like this in a very long time. And with the camera in the way, I'm not able to hold it right up to my face to uh, look at some of these details. So... I'll have to get those later. But right now I'm just applying a uh, a base just to let me know what colors are going where and we do the detail later. See we're just painting a happy little cape here. Only happy accidents with the cape. But anyway I would sit in the study carols at the library for a long time looking at books and like I said monster books ghost books those uh, man myth and magic collection those were reference books so I could never check those out Looks like he almost has a scabbard back there. Huh. Anyway. Across the street from the library and a couple doors down from the hobby store was a Rexall drugstore. Now I'm not sure if that's a uh, name brand if you will. If that's a
a uh, franchise type of company or whatever <clears throat> but I have to say by the time I frequented it it didn't really seem like a drugstore it was your normal five and dime little knickknacks here and there on these huge old dark wooden shelves that probably once held uh, I didn't like doing that but we'll deal with that another time but it had you know probably my imagination it would have held big glass containers of different medicines or toiletries like how they would sell them back in the day but when I frequented it you could they they had an old soda fountain like the old soda jerk kind of thing where you would get flavors in your coke and they would sell nickel cokes in these little cups and they had penny candy and nickel candy excuse me getting a drink here so I would get things like those bottle cap candies and um, bottle caps mostly that was my favorite probably at the time and I would just drink my little coke sitting outside on the stoop of the place and take my candy with me over to the library while I looked at books Also, on Main Street, in the more earlier 80s, there was the Goodwill. And I remember when you first walked in off of Main Street through the glass doors, it would... It was like a sea of furniture, of these, you know, the stereotypical 70s rough fabric muted colors like mustard and and like a pea greens and just a sea of them but past that sea of tacky fabrics was their toy room and they had shells of just bric-a-brac -a and I don't remember that much in general but the one thing I do remember is they didn't have the full set but the G.I. Joe train set I remember getting a couple of the cars a little bit of the track I don't even remember if any of the little plastic uh, army men came with it. But I remember that at least. And I had those for a long time. Until I became older and things like that didn't have a, a place anymore. And they probably were donated again to somewhere else. Maybe back to the Goodwill, maybe Salvation Army, somewhere. But the weir weird thing I remember is riding my bike behind the place. And nowadays this would be insane, I would assume. But they had s all these mattresses up against the wall and they'd be spraying them down with something outside there. Probably to kill any critters living in them. Making them smell a little bit better. Also on Main Street. Right near all of that hustle and bustle of the Goodwill and Hobby Store and the Rexall. Was a place called Mathers. And that was a local department store. And I mean like old school department stores. A couple floors. 
had an elevator and I'm sure at one time it was a little bit of everything but my experience with it it was the rich people clothes store so we never went there to buy clothes the only reason we went there was on the top floor they had a Boy Scout and Girl Scout section where you could buy your uniform needs or a little Pinewood Derby kit and the patches you would need when you would level up through the ranks of Bobcat and Wolf and Weebelo and the like. But like I said, it always seemed like the rich person store. A lot of the kids that would bully me in school would get their clothes there. The newest gotcha t-shirts or Hobie. And all the cool neon colors. Levi jeans. But not me. I was mostly a Goodwill clothing kid. Which that Goodwill, their clothing section was on the second floor. I don't remember really going up there. I know my parents did. My mother did. And I would just stay in the toy room and play and look at the toys. While she was up there. Getting my husky pants and things also down the road a little bit a couple blocks definitely walking distance or biking distance there was a JC Penny that was also and I know I'm covering up some detail here I'll get that later probably shouldn't even have gotten that I think that's part of his armor here oh well um, the JC Penny was two stories and the basement had shoes and their catalog pickup and customer service and the upstairs was clothes and then there was a third story that was just all the kids clothes and my biggest memory of that place was uh, my first exposure to the Smurfs because and that was like real early 80s I mean even before they had a cartoon I remember they had a display by one of the cash registers And it was a Christmas of that year, actually. I got a bunch of them. And like I said, it was before a cartoon. I didn't know what they were, but I loved them. And I still have a lot of them. Just been waiting for the right opportunity to show off some of them. On an It Came From episode. Silver armor. We'll age it up a little bit. Um... But I remember by the time I got to middle school, they were just limping along. The clothes, they didn't have that big of a selection anymore. But one of the things I remember in middle school, they had a Young Einstein t-shirt and an NXS t-shirt. Which I just, I wanted that NXS t-shirt. And it was from the album Kick. Probably their most famous album. And I... I want to say it had like a weapon motif to it, but I can't remember. And for a life of me, I'm trying to remember what songs were even on that album. <laughs> other than the popular ones that would... 
that would be that. Like it had bombs and... I don't want to say daggers for that song. Uh, putting little daggers in your heart. Not that song. I know it didn't have daggers for that. But... Just thinking about that. Just with how screwed up the world is right now, and I hate even mention it, but it seems like my brain has dipped more into the pools of nostalgia. But with how things are, I just have not had the free time to be creative with that outlet. I mean, recently all I've been doing, like, this, maybe the last two weeks, I can't even recall at this moment, has been, it came from episodes. Because it's like, that's as much mental uh, fortitude I have right now. It's like, last night I tried to do an episode, a list, and I just couldn't. I couldn't. couldn't focus enough in my thoughts to get past the first couple entries. I'm just going to guess this is part of the armor. Probably messing up. So I abandoned it. And then I just, I had this idea. Because my sentimentals, I try to talk about things like this like in the past of like roller skating and and when sentimental first started that was my uh, if you will special effects heavy episodes because the main show was a talkie show but now it's kind of reversed uh, the main show which is now Days of Dorker Past is the more special effects heavy show. So I can just keep this as a uh, talkie show. And just, you know, like I say in my little intro to Sentimental. And I'm only emphasizing that because I've been called out in the past for not pronouncing it correctly. I know how to. It's just I have a lazy hillbilly way of talking and a very slight speech impediment, I guess. Just of simplifying how to talk. I guess it's a laziness in my vocal cords. I don't know. But anyway... I say that this is just somewhere where I can remember stuff and maybe you guys can remember as well. I mean, I'm sure I'm not the only one with these memories. Now, I have no idea what to title this episode now. I mean, I've had all these thoughts of growing up in a small town. I mean, I'll... I mean, we're already a half an hour in. I don't know how much further you guys want to take this without me boring you to tears anymore. I mean, when I was in fifth grade, the mall opened up in our town. And I guess that was the beginning of the end of the whole Main Street thing. There is nowhere else like a Bobby's Hobby Lobby, but when the mall opened, they had a Walden Books, and that opened up my whole world to a bigger selection of gaming books. And in our town we had a very small toy store that was always 
out of the way enough that I couldn't bike to it because I still wasn't allowed to cross the highway or go too far from our house because we only lived maybe a mile away from Main Street maybe even closer at some points but the places I wanted to frequent were about a mile and my high school or my middle school was probably a mile from there and I would ride my bike when the weather was nice and there was this little toy store called the Toy Stop apparently it had been in our town for a very long time but I know by the time the mall opened and KB Toys came around they were they were limping along they were gone and like I said in the sticker episode wow that's been a while now since I did that they had this huge area just of any type of sticker they were on like rolls in these glass or plexiglass containers that you, you know the roll was on and you pull them out by the sheet and rip them off different like Lisa Frank type of stuff the cool ones I mean were packaged individually if you will uh, laser blazers or whatever they're called and scratch and sniffs but like I said that was always just out of my little bubble of bike riding but I do remember going in there once and that was my first uh, exposure to a, you know a lot of GI Joe because one of the places that bef you know before anything else bigger opened up was like Woolsworth and Ames was the biggest department store type of place that we had and they had a good selection but like a toy store just seemed to have more and it was displayed in a different way But it was like where I saw a ton of G.I. Joe stuff for the first time. And on one occasion, my dad, because my mom was out playing bingo with her friends, wanted to treat me. And he bought me the shark with deep six. Which I still have the deep six. Wish I still had the shark. But that's long gone. It seemed like the vehicles, like the bigger stuff, was the stuff my parents wanted to give away first. Like it took up too much room or something. I didn't have many to begin with, but they seem like the first things to always go. Oh, sorry. Allergy season. Not a good time to be uh, having those problematic symptoms, if you know what I mean. But anyway, this was just a cathartic talking session with you all. Do a little bit of relaxing painting here. And I will save this dude for next time if you guys enjoyed this. Like I said, it's just a little bit something different to look at. That you're not looking at my stupid mug the whole time. With my uh, hand talking and chopping and all that stuff. 
just nice relaxing little talk like we're hanging out like like I said back in the day after work I would be I would sit on the lazy boy I had and just sit there and paint and that was before I met my wife and I'd have buddies stop by and come over and I would just sit there and paint and we'd talk drink a couple beers watch wrestling you know single guy kind of stuff and I've just been thinking about it recently like I said big shout out to Al over at Kaiju Shorts because looking at his beautiful painting jobs and model building just made me yearn for those days just a little bit to do this but anyway I've bored you all enough for one day so let's get back to me okay Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that new way of doing things. Uh, I didn't get the miniature done, but if you liked it, let me know, and next time we can work on it again. I know, I had fun, and it was very relaxing to do that. Like I said, it's been 10 plus years, maybe 12 years since I painted a miniature. So it was very therapeutic very relaxing and that's kind of what I need in this crazy time that we're in right now um, with that I hope everyone out there is being safe being healthy enjoying time with their family if they're stuck indoors and you should be um, unfortunately I don't have that luxury uh, I'm an essential worker so I'm out every day um, and what happens happens unfortunately but I'm out there doing a good thing for people so I just have to look at it that way like I said I hope everyone is being safe healthy and enjoying this time being indoors so if you did like this episode give me a thumbs up if you got something to say please leave a comment I love reading them and I love getting back to everybody and if you're new around here and you enjoyed this or any of the episodes that uh, YouTube is recommending down below, hit subscribe. I would appreciate it. And if you hit that little bell icon, you'll be notified whenever there's a new episode. So, until next time, be safe, be healthy, be rad, and be dorky.